Next up is uh, Dave, who will solve all our DNS problems. <laughs> At least I'm uh, suggesting some solutions, unlike some of our other speakers who just have problems. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I, I, I saw a lightning talk slot come up and I thought I'd just whip up a quick um, presentation based off something that I've done for a customer. Um, so this is a sort of practical, real world example of how you can use some open source tools to hopefully solve uh, this lovely haiku. Um, anyone had DNS problems in the past? Yeah, the rest of you aren't actually running networks or sysadmins, it's fine. Um, no worries. So, um, what, is, what, is the, what, are, what are the problems we're talking about? Uh, firstly, clients suck at failing over their DNS resolution. So, if you read the man page for resolve.conf, it says uh, that the behavior about failing over between name servers isn't what you'd expect. You can switch it to um, round robin effectively, but inherently the issue is that you don't know that you haven't got the response that you were asking for because you have to wait. The server might be taking a while. So in a low latency, uh, intense environment, um, uh, such as the one that I developed this solution for, for uh, video, you need to get DNS responses quite quickly because uh, these day cloud services have extremely low TTLs, which is the next point. Um, uh, you know, you've got a TTL of five seconds on a streaming endpoint, and if you don't uh, resolve that, you get black to air, and people that are paying for a service get upset. Uh, you need to um, have caches and uh, DNS resolution that works quite well. Uh, the third point uh, is one that gets harped on about a fair bit, which is not mixing the recursive and authoritative roles in DNS servers. So very quickly on that, uh, an authoritative server is one that is responsible for knowing what the zone records are. It's the boss of that zone. It has the database, you know, a, a, or a file that says what the records are in reality. And a recursive server is uh, the server that's meant to ask all the authoritative servers and the various global hierarchy about DNS. Um, uh, what those um, real answers are, and there's caches and TTLs along the way. Um, I assume there's some DNS knowledge here. So anyway, I'll just walk you through the solution that I um, came up with real quick. Uh, first, first problem is solved by having a, a VIP using KeepAliveD. Um, so we've got three servers, uh, virtual machines or physical machines, depending on what you want to do. Um, I used industrial PCs for one of our customers. I use virtual machines, it works quite well. Um, and the key point here is that you, you only have one entry for your main name server, um, and then you make sure that that name server, that, that, that IP address is kept as um, available as possible. So any cast does something similar. Um, Keep Alive D is sort of a poor man's way of doing it if you can't cooperate with the network team. Ideally, you talk to them about um, uh, you know, some sort of BGP or router-related uh, fail, failover of the IP, but the idea is have one good IP, keep it highly available as a strategy. Um, secondly, uh, use the various components of PowerDNS to do load balancing and caching um, with forwarding rules. So PowerDNS is an open source DNS server. Um, I've been using Bind for uh, nearly 20 years now um, and really only got into PowerDNS recently. Uh, apologies for anyone who's been using it for ages. Um, I'm a relatively new convert. Um, it has really three main components, DNS dist, which is a reverse proxy load balancer, uh, for want of a better word, um, uh, PowerDNS recursor, which now does just recursive, and then PowerDNS authoritative, which is for that authoritative role we talked about before. Not going to cover that in this um, talk. Uh, DNS dist, so uh, I promised to have batteries included with this. Um, if we've got some Ansible users here, this is how I configured things. You can grab the DNS dist Ansible role from there, and this configuration will make a working DNS proxy. Um, keeping in mind that so the reverse load balancer listens on 53 and then forwards to each of the three servers on 5300. Um, and then they have, and the DNS dist hat comes with its own API, so you can monitor what's going on. You can see what records get resolved and how all that works. Um, and then it can also do uh, caching um, and the various settings of the cachings are set up there. Um, so that's the guy that's sitting here in the. Um, as, as the front end on port 53, and that receives a response, balances it over the other three servers in the cluster, or two, or five if you want, um, and then that forwards it onto the actual recursor. The recursion, um, and again, this is a cut and paste working example, you'll get yourself a useful um, power DNS server, um, says where things come from, listens on the right ports and all that sort of stuff, you can grab that role and away you go. Um, and then the other important point is that you're forwarding, uh, in our case, between two different zones. If I flick back to here, we've got AWS at one and internal on the other. No worries. <coughs> 
because we want to be able to actually have a zone, uh, a forward zone that forwards some records internally. So this is the idea of poisoning DNS. That's pretty useful. Um, you generally, in a you know complicated network, will have some DNS servers over there and some over here, and then you want some out on the internet, and you might need to resolve all of them at once. Um, in this customer's case, it was we've got some AWS endpoints, we've got some uh, Akamai endpoints, and then we've got to reach some other stuff on the internet and also reach stuff internally. And so uh, this zone uh, forward zone config lets you have an internal zone in one place and then two upstreams for it. And then uh, the mixture of the semicolons and the all other zones magic there means that you can balance between various upstreams. And then if they're down, forward them to the um, you know global anycast ones that you like. So that pretty much covers the whole thing. Um, we've got like two minutes for questions. Anyone got any questions? In summary, it works great. They went from having a bunch of outages once a week to zero. So hey, it works. And thanks for that.